Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to our secondary school new starters induction webinar. This is for uh, you as parents, but also for your children as well. So hopefully it gives you some good information moving forward as we uh, approach the new academic year. Uh, I know we're right at the start um, of the summer holidays for many of you, um, but what we want to do is uh, ensure that you've got plenty of time to get your head around a few things and maybe even pick up some uh, last minute tips which might help as we move as we move into the new academic year. Um, so first of all, uh, we're just going to run through the schedule. Uh, just a, a quick introduction. Uh, we'll do meet the team, a tour and the welcome day that is upcoming. We'll look at the school day, uh, tutor groups and our pride ethos at Park House. We'll also be looking at subjects and languages. Uh, then we'll look into the UCAS A levels, GCSEs and academic success. We'll look at uh, touch on exams a little bit and then we'll look at devices, extracurricular activities and any frequently asked questions that have come up in the past. Uh, so first of all, uh, my name is Mr McDonald. Uh, I've been at Park House now for three years and I'm just about to go into post as assistant head teacher uh, and I'll be looking after key stage three. Um, so start off uh, meeting the team. So we're into a completely new uh, secondary leadership team. Uh, so we ha are going to be headed up by Mrs Rebecca Saunders, who's joining us from the UK. Uh, I've got myself. We'll also have Mrs Olivia Mason. Uh, she's going to be the assistant head and in charge of Key Stage 4. And Mrs Kerry Walton, uh, who's assistant head and looking after the Key Stage 5. Uh, both ladies are coming from uh, DBS uh, here in Qatar, so they've both got plenty of experience uh, of Qatar itself. Uh, and and they know exactly what you know challenges and what and what good stuff we can do here as well. So uh, we're really looking forward to getting started, uh, and I think it's a really exciting time for the school. So as I uh, previously mentioned, uh, we're going to be doing a tour and a welcome day. So on the eighth of August, um, the the four of us, uh, Mrs. Saunders, myself, Mrs. Walton, and, and Miss Mason, will be conducting a welcome day and a tour of the school for all our new starters. And the admissions team uh, have sent out an email to all of you um, for you to be able to register your interest. Um, and if you'd like to come along to that, please get in touch with them so we can make sure and finalise numbers. Hopefully, uh, when we come back after the summer, we won't be uh, adhering to as many COVID restrictions and there'll be a, a lift on the number we're allowed in the auditorium. So fingers crossed, um, when we come back after summer, that should all be sorted. OK, so uh, having a little look at the school day, the secondary school day is structured slightly differently um, to some other places. Uh, I know that some other schools close by might have a two week timetable. Um, some schools might only have one break uh, and we also have, we have different timings as well. And this is all obviously going to be a, a big change for those coming into year seven, especially because they'll be changing classrooms and they'll be changing uh, teachers every lesson as well. So uh, there's lots of lots of change people coming in. We know it can be very daunting for for your children when you come to it, especially a new environment. So uh, it's really important that we get across to you how it works. So in the morning from between 7.30 and 7.40, um, our staff have briefings and meetings. Uh, students are allowed on site from seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, however, they'll have to assemble in the courtyard um, or around the buildings. They're not allowed in school until 7.40 and that's a safeguarding reason um, purely because staff could be in meetings, um, they could be uh, on calls with parents, so we ask our students just to wait outside till half past seven. Uh, we then have a tutor period which is 7.40 till eight o'clock and then we have our first three lessons and they are 50 minutes each and they run from eight o'clock until 10.30 and then we have our first break, uh, which is 25 minutes long. Uh, it's really important as well that uh, your child has got a, a, you know, a, a lunch which is full of sustenance because especially in the hot weather, we see a lot of students running out of water very early. We do have water fountains where they can refill their bottles, um, but it's important they've got plenty of, plenty of fluids to last them through the day and they've got uh, plenty of nutritious food as well because uh, a lot of the time we do see uh, students come in with either no lunch at all um, or, or options which probably aren't best for their uh, you know, development. So we, we try and encourage them to have a, a healthy lifestyle at school. Uh, after that break, we then go into a further two lessons until 12.35. 
uh, before we have our second break of 25 minutes. And then we have one final lesson from one until 1.50, and then it's the end of the school day. Uh, at the end of the school day uh, is when our extracurricular program starts. So students are able to sign up to that at the beginning of term and they run normally from 1.50 to 2.30 and then from 2.40 uh, to 3.10. So as I said, uh, first thing in the morning, the students will have their tutor period uh, and that is a 20 minute session with uh, the same teacher every day. Uh, they go through a, a scheme of work which is devised by the progress leader for your child's year group. So it may differ slightly uh, year on year. Um, your form tutor should always be your first point of contact for any uh, any issues that may arise uh, because they're, they're the ones that see them every day. They've got the most knowledge of your child I would say so that they, they should be your first point of contact and uh, I'll, I'll show you how to contact them later in the webinar. It's also essential that you, uh, the students arrive on time to their form class to maximise their time with their tutor. Um, this can be due, looking at this, uh, your students progress and making sure that they're on track or if they're behind how they can improve. There's also reading time uh, and we run an accelerated reading programme uh, within the school so uh, this is also a key time when your when your child will be able to do that. Uh, and moving into the exam years, that you know, obviously it's essential that they're communicating with their tutor if they're struggling with any subjects, so we can have the intervention program in place. So ensuring that they're on time to tutor period is really really important. Now, um, for for new starters, especially uh, something that you will probably be shocked by is the traffic level that we have outside of school. Unfortunately, there are four schools that are on the same street. So I would advise making sure you leave with plenty of time to spare. Uh, I talked earlier uh, and looking into pride ethos. This is promoting our positive behaviour. Uh, this is something uh, the school's devised over the last few, uh, three or four years. And it's something that we think is really, really important. We take behaviour management really seriously and we've got really high expectations of every single student both in the classroom and around the school so what we want from our students is perseverance responsibility independence dedication and engagement every one of those things is is so so important for our individual students because we want them to face challenges and we want them to be able to overcome them and what's what's really essential is that we have parental support uh, and, this, and your students have support from their teachers in school. We have something called good struggle, which is, you know, we want the students to find things hard and find their way out of them. We don't want them to give up. We want them to make sure they persevere. We want them to be responsible with their books. We want them to be independent with their learning as well at home, be dedicated to everything they do and be engaged when they come to school. It's, I think it's a really, really, important ethos that we have because every student should be following these things to make sure they become not just a better student but a better person at the end of the day. Okay so uh, we're going to move on to uniform and um, first today we're going to look at the boys so we've got boys that will wear uh, a short sleeve shirt and um, senior boys so that's boys from year 7 to year 13 uh, will wear as trousers uh, you can either wear a school jumper or the polar fleece, which is available at the school shop, uh, and then black or white socks. Um, something uh, that we do get asked sometimes uh, from our Muslim students is, can they wear a long sleeve shirt? I, I'm, I, I'm aware that there is some shortage of long sleeve shirts in the school shop if they would like to wear um, either the jumper or the fleece, or alternatively wear a, a thin white undergarment, that's absolutely fine as well. Uh, and the same would go for girls too. Okay, so uh, just look again, looking at the girls here, so the girls would wear a short sleeve blouse, a uh, senior girls skirt, which would be a minimum of five centimetres above the knee. Senior girls uh, can also wear trousers if they so wish. Um, the, there's also the cardigan, uh, the jumper, or the polar fleece. Uh, and black or white socks as well. Uh, something again talking about the long sleeve shirt, but I don't believe the school shop is stocking or the school uniform shop is stocking at the moment. So again, girls are welcome to wear a thin white undergarment uh, under their shirt if they so wish. Okay, uh, sick form uniform for both boys and girls. 
Uh, so the boys can wear black tailored trousers, a white park house shirt. Um, if wearing a vest or a t-shirt underneath, uh, it's, it should be plain white. Uh, we also have a park house uh, jacket for them, uh, black socks and the school tie as well. Uh, the girls would wear black tailored trousers or a skirt, which is knee length or longer and not tight fitting. Uh, park house blouse with plain white t-shirt or vest worn underneath. Uh, park has black v-neck pullover, black socks or tights and a black headscarf if worn. Now we are obviously accommodating with the headscarf, so a headscarf can be green or white as well, uh, as long as they're not brightly coloured. OK, um, school shoes is the next point. Uh, obviously, I think those who've lived in Qatar maybe for a long time have found school shoes particularly difficult to come by at times. Uh, and I think that has improved, especially over the last few years. Um, the school shoes is uh, a quite contentious issue at times with some students and it is really important that the message is put out there nice and early for you. So school shoes should be black leather or leather, leather look and polished. Uh, canvas shoes, sports branded shoes, black trainers or trainer style shoes are not permitted. We recommend that you choose this carefully. Uh, to avoid having to purchase a second pair if they're not correct. So if a, if a student is coming to school in black trainers and they're told, no, you need to be wearing school shoes, we, we don't have, want, you, uh, want to have you buying twice. Uh, the image below shows what are deemed acceptable. Um, and as you can see, there's uh, lots of different alternative shoes available for you to purchase. OK. Moving on, uh, so we're going to start looking at key stage three now. So this is year seven, eight and nine. Uh, when a student arrives in year seven, they'll be starting a number of new subjects and we'll have to adjust to the concept of moving classrooms and having different teachers for each subject, which is very daunting at times. I think, you know, having been in a, um, a single classroom environment for six years previous for them, it's going to be a big change. So uh, it does take a little bit of time to adjust. Um, but uh, I can assure you that your year seven uh, children will be very well looked after by their form tutor, but also they'll have a year 10 buddy who will walk around school with them uh, and make sure that they get to their classes uh, in the right time. Uh, we also aim to instill a really solid base of knowledge in this year um, in each subject to make sure they're able to move up to year eight and nine and carry on progressing properly. Um, so towards the end of year nine, the students will then be invited to pick their preferred subjects for GCSEs, uh, you know, because the, the those first three years are really an introduction to each subject. Uh, and it's important that we allow the students to find their feet and find their strengths. And something that's really, really important to us is we don't put pressure on them um, to pick that subject or pick this subject. It's, it's, it's something that's up to them so they can find you know, their niche, every child is different and we and we really appreciate that. So we want to make sure that they play to their strengths and they, you know, pick the subjects that are going to uh, excite them uh, and make them want to come to school every day. Uh, we are in the process of, of appointing uh, a new progress leader for year seven, which will happen at the beginning of next term. Uh, so in the meantime, I will be overseeing uh, the year seven uh, starting off the year. I'm uh, also going to be moving into the assistant head role as well, so I'll be overseeing the whole process for key stage three and I'll also be assisted by Mr Corrigan, who's our progress leaders uh, for year eight and year nine. Uh, language choices, so in uh, year seven, eight and nine, uh, we can pick a, a language. So if you are an Arabic block passport holder, you must continue with Arabic in the secondary school. So. Um, even if you've studied French at another school um, and, you and you hold an Arabic block passport, uh, for example, if you hold an Egyptian passport and that is what is associated to your Qatar ID card, um, then your child will have to study Arabic. Um, that is a ministry law. It's not, it's not our law. It's, it's, it's been uh, put in place last year by the Ministry of Education and Higher Education. So we have to make sure we strictly adhere to that rule. Uh, pupils that have studied French or Spanish in primary school uh, will need to state their preference for either French or Spanish. And we cannot obviously guarantee first choice. Um, it, it purely depends on class sizes, but most of the time we are able to accommodate uh, everyone's choice. Now we're going to look at uh, Key Stage 4. So Key Stage 4, we understand 
the students are starting to feel like there, there's a, a, a quite a big increase in their workload and more is demanded of them by their teachers. Now, this is obviously due to their GCSE years and it start, they're starting to make the students understand uh, what is expected of them, what's going to be coming their way. It is something that's really, really important. Uh, and, and there is a little bit of that shock, the same that you would get from year six to year seven, you also get that from year nine to year 10. Uh, year 10 is once again uh, an introduction to their option choices, particularly those that are new subjects to them. So for example, um, they'll be able to choose an economics, business studies, sociology, academic physical education. Um, so there's lots of different uh, branches that they won't have studied at Key Stage 3, which they start at Key Stage 4. Um, so at the end of the, uh, the end of year 10, they'll have their first experience of exams at Park House, which are internal. Uh, and then as they move into year 11, with it being their GCSE year, uh, any students that feel like they might benefit from any intervention classes, they'll be able to attend them later in the year, uh, which will assist them with any exam preparation they might have. Uh, Mrs Mason uh, will be overseeing the process for Key Stage 4 and Mrs Legg is our progress leader for years 10 and 11. And then finally Key Stage 5, our students will have chosen their A-levels uh, at the end of year 11 uh, and students will be given a three-week grace period where they'll be able to change their subjects at the beginning of the academic year. Uh, the reason that we do that and we give quite a short window is because once the term starts, students are straight into learning year 12 content. Um, and if we're waiting six, eight weeks to change subjects, there's an awful lot of content to catch up on. Um, and we don't want, you know, classes having to go back over stuff that have been studying it and for the teachers having to repeat themselves as well. So it's important that the students, you know, in that first three week period, make sure that they are sure of what they're going to be doing. Students in year 12 will normally take four AS levels and then they normally will drop one. However, that is not a compulsory rule. Uh, there are students that might sit three AS levels and sit them all the way through to A2, or there also might be students that sit th four or five AS levels and continue them all the way through. And, you know, it, it just very much depends on the student themselves. Uh, students will have their first study periods in the sixth form and it is essential that these are utilised effectively. Um, students will be again will have that shock of moving from year 11 to 12 and the volume of work that is expected of them, which is due to the amount of content they need to know over the two year period uh, for their A levels. So it is really, really important that we encourage them to use their study periods properly. Uh, ensure that they're catching up on any homework, ensure that they're doing maybe prior reading to their lessons, something that can't be underestimated and, and is going to be very important to them when they start uh, going to university. Uh, Mrs Walton will be overseeing the process for Key Stage 5 and Mrs Alan Adekunle is our head of sixth form. So now we're going to have a quick look at the UCAS process. Uh, that starts towards the end of term two for our year 12 students uh, and they'll be asked to start looking at their personal statement and investigating what field of study um, they would like to go into. At the beginning of year 13, the first applications that are looked at uh, are those that are looking to study medicine. And then we look at the university applications for the USA, Canada and the United Kingdom. And then finally, we look at applications for Europe, Qatar and the rest of the world. And the reason for this uh, and the way that this is prioritised is due to the different university deadlines. So medicine is obviously a very um, competitive course so making sure that we get those applications in early getting the personal statements properly um properly checked is really really important so we, we will there will be strict deadlines throughout that year 13 year that the, the students will need to um to adhere to uh, mrs allen adequately has got over 10 years experience as working as a careers counselor and head of sick form and she very much ensures uh, that your child's application is fine-tuned uh, and well looked after OK, um, so now talking um, about exams. So exams are always going to be a topic of contention uh, and that happens all the way from year seven right the way through to year 13. So uh, it's really important that we get the message across nice and early that during Key Stage 3, students sit no official exams uh, in the school. Uh, and that's really, really important because at the end of the day, no one remembers the class test 
or the class exam they did when they were in year seven and did it really affect their GCSE grade or their A-level grade? It didn't. So it's, it's a, you know, when they do a, a class test or they do a class, um, a progress test, it's, it's purely to determine um, are they retaining the knowledge? Is everything going through? Do the teachers maybe need to adjust the lesson slightly? Um, it's not it's not to do with, you know, or you must pass this test or, you know, you won't pass the year. Uh, they've got until year nine um, to, to figure out what subjects they like. And that's really, really important to us. Uh, and as I said uh, just before, students will only sit their first internal exam during year 10 uh, and then they'll have mocks in year 11 to prepare them properly. So they're uh, much more official um, for that will prepare them for our GCSE series. Uh, and our students will will sit class tests throughout the year uh, to ensure that they're on track for their GCSE course. And that's uh, we look at their CAT tests, which uh, your child will have done uh, to gain entry into the school. Uh, and every student will have sat a CAT test um, at some point in the last 24 months. So and we've looked to do that in year seven uh, and year nine and year 11. And then they look at Alice tests later on um, into sixth form. Uh, at Key Stage 5, students will be able to reset any exams um, in, the, in the winter period um, and then they'll have mock exams themselves in the springtime before their summer exam series. Uh, and then obviously we have the, uh, the process of study leave, so year 11s, 12s and 13s will be allowed to go on study leave and we are ensuring that our year 12s come back to school. Um, so for, between sort of uh, three to five weeks before the end of term. It just very much depends on uh, how Ramadan falls. It also depends on the, uh, the term dates as well. But we are asking our year 12 students now to come back to school uh, to get a head start for their year 13 content, which is something that's really important. Uh, I think it uh, eases a lot of um, anxiety as it gets closer to exams later in the year as well, because they've had that uh, little bit of a head start at, at the beginning of the last year. Uh, now looking at academic success, 80 to 90 percent of pupils have achieved five GCSEs, including English and mathematics. 50 percent of entries are at a grade of A to A star or nine to seven. Uh, and then our A level results, 80 percent of entries were grade A to C and 25 percent of entries were grade A star to A, which is really good going, I think. I think they've done uh, particularly well. Uh, and I know this year as well, our students have worked particularly hard uh, and have been some of the some of the students that have probably been affected the most by it. Um, that I remember when they were uh, in year eleven and they were away off and said, "See you after the summer," thinking that you know that was going to COVID was going to be a short-lived thing. So they've actually only just sat their first official exams um, in their lives for their A level. So there's obviously been a lot of added pressure for them. But I think you know we've worked really hard to ensure that they're in the best place possible. So now looking at what constitutes success. Every child is different and expectations should be specific to your own child. So we should we never ever compare a child uh, and their marks. We never say that uh, John or oh, you got this and, and Frank, you got this because every child is different. Every child's got different uh, interests, different strengths. So it's important that we look at each individual child separately. Exams and tests are only measures of their progress, especially at key stage three. Um, and we ask, you know, if there is a class test that we don't pressurize your child um, when they're scheduled, because obviously with the with the pandemic, we, we've noticed a lot of anxiety in our, in our uh, children at school and, and something that our well-being officer fed back to uh, fed back a lot to us was the pressure of tests that they were feeling. And that was in year seven, which was uh, quite shocking, really, because we didn't want them to feel um, feel like that is it purely is a, a test of are they retaining their knowledge? You know, we, we don't focus on test results and the actual data until year 10 because that's when we, we really need to be getting a shift on in terms of, OK, are we on track with this? Are we going the right direction uh, towards your GCSE grades? Do we need to have an intervention class for you? Do we need to look at a different option for you? So that's the you know the times that we're looking really at the raw data uh, of test results. Uh, every child has got a different path to take in life, and our job 
is to ensure that they're best equipped to succeed on their journey. Uh, and not just as a student, like I said earlier, but as a person as well, because we want them to leave as better people. Uh, devices, so um, obviously everyone has a different view on devices and the way education has been delivered has changed inexplicably over the last 30 months or so. Um, and it is important that we embrace changes of school and ensure that we utilise devices as best we can um, because because they are there, they're everywhere. We all know that. We all know that we pick up our phone, we pick up our iPad to do work, to contact someone. It, it's just the way the world is moving. Um, what we do have in school, though, is a no phones out policy um, on the school campus. So if your child brings a school, to, uh, a phone to school, uh, it should be in their bag unless a staff member has approved its use uh, in the classroom, because we do use Teams platform um, and we use a number of Microsoft operating platforms such as Teams, PowerPoint, Excel, um, we use Minecraft um, and ICT. So there is lots of programs that they can use their, on their device, um, but the teachers will be the ones to allow them to use it. We don't want our students you know, texting during their break times, spending all their time looking at screens. It's purely a hybrid model that we use. We do use notebooks as well, so there will be marking, but some teachers also choose to mark uh, on OneNote, which is another of Microsoft's platforms. Uh, and that's mainly more looking at um, your GCSE and your A-level years, but it's important that we do embrace this change. We, we do use it properly uh, and we are very, and we are very strict in how, it, how it's managed and staff are always watching um, because we don't want situations where there's any safeguarding issues or any student feels isolated because they're not in a group. So we do really try our best, especially in the pastoral side, to make sure that this is well managed. Um, we do recommend that every student has a device that is uh, accessible for them at school. So that can either be a laptop, a tablet or a phone um, that's Wi-Fi. Uh, enabled so we can connect to the school Wi-Fi system. Uh, now we're going to look at extracurricular. So at the beginning of the year, uh, we invite students to sign up for extracurricular activities. Uh, these are extracurricular, so they shouldn't be an extension of the school day. Uh, we shouldn't be going on oh, extra maths or extra science. It's something to uh, enrich our students. So we want them to join one of the wide variety of clubs that are and, and activities that are available. Um, because every staff member is obliged to host one uh, club per year, which will run right the way through. So it is really, really important um, that they try stuff that's new. And that's something that is important to them as they move through life as well. And um, we've got clubs that range from chess to anime or from football to travel. So there's a there's a really wide variety of clubs they can join. Uh, we actively encourage them to sign up to at least one activity after school. Uh, and also uh, we'll have sports teams which will practice during this time. Now, the way that sports teams normally work is um, that there'll be a trial period and they can attend the trial. And if they're not originally picked, they can still come back to practice. And if they're improving, they will be potentially picked for the team. So it, it does depend on um, some performances, but we try to ensure that everyone's included um, throughout the year. So how to contact your teacher um, or the form tutor is always the first name dot surname at parkhouseschool.com. So for example, my email address, if you ever need to contact me for any key stage three problems, or if you ever need any uh, extra information, it's michael.mcdonald at parkhouseschool.com. So that would be how you would contact any of the form tutors or um, any teachers that you might want to get in contact throughout the school year. Um, Looking at um, some frequently asked questions, um, they normally sort of centre around devices or language choices. Um, so just I know I know that some parents are um, understandably edgy about you know an eleven year old having a mobile phone, um, which is why you know we do recommend a tablet. There is there is also um, some videos we, we were able to share with you as a parent if you want to put parental locks on any apps or programs that they might want to use. So we're more than happy to assist you um, if you're a bit concerned about what they might be using on their phones. Um, and it is important to manage, uh, you know, as a parent to manage the, the child's screen time and ensure that you know what's going on on their phone. 
uh, something that we, we we actively encourage, especially in year seven. Um, and then language choices. Um, again, as I touched on earlier, the, the the main questions we've got is if you have a dual passport, um, can you register that to your QID, which you can do, but you, it's up to you. The school cannot go to the ministry for you. You would have to go to the ministry yourself and ensure that um, your passport. So if you have held an American and an Egyptian passport, for example, if you did not want your child to study Arabic, but you wanted them to study French, you would have to ensure that their American passport is registered to their Qatar ID. And um, that's that's the main questions that we had um, when we sent out the form. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to talk to me about or anything else you'd like to get in touch about, please don't hesitate to do so. Um, I really hope we see as many of you as possible uh, on the 8th of August for the school tour and the induction day. If there's anything else I can do for you, please don't hesitate to contact me. I hope you all have a lovely summer break and I look forward to meeting you all very soon. Thank you.